this question, particularly because no matter how much you have improved, our industry is in the business of carbon emission. Uh, we cannot get away from that. So who would like to discuss or define carbon capture, carbon utilization, carbon storage? Uh, Dan Hill, would you like to introduce this subject? Because I know you love it. I'm sorry. You are muted, you need to be unmuted. Sorry about that. Yeah. So yes, I've been a skeptic about this whole business for many, many years as our Very good government's read. thrown billions of dollars at it. So I'll, I'll, I'll claim that we'll never sequester enough carbon to make a measurable change in the atmospheric levels of CO2. And, and uh, um, it's not a very popular opinion, I don't guess these days, but it, to me, it's, it's totally impractical. It's economically suicidal to think about the volumes of CO2 that would have to be injected to have any measurable effect. It would basically, we'd have to reinvent the oil and gas industry, the same kinds of numbers of wells, and every one of these wells would be drilled at a complete loss. There's no money to be made in pumping CO2 into the ground with a few rare exceptions of EOR uh, instances. Um, so it's, you know, it, to do this, it would have to be totally paid for by, uh, by taxpayers, by, by citizens who wanted to see this happen. Um, countries that chose not to play the game would have an immediate economic advantages and there are countries in this world that I think would see that clearly. And so it, uh, I, I just, I, it, it, as far as I'm concerned, it's practically not doable. Um, Would it be a good idea to, uh, you expressed your opinion, but, uh, and seems very logical, but a reasonable fin um, um, uh, financial study or, or, or uh, say cost uh, uh, benefit study should be able to bring that up at least to some level. And I do not know of anybody who has done that. Uh, well, actually, you know, we had a speaker just a couple of weeks ago, a, a really top-notch finance person. Uh, and, and the numbers he put out, it, the cost to capture, you know, significant amount of CO2 of that, you know, derived from fossil energy uh, fuel uh, burning would be about $50 a barrel for crude oil, $50 a barrel. So, you know, basically you want to double the oil price, double the price of gasoline, diesel, all the products that come from crude oil. That's about the kind of ballpark figure. And I, I, part, I think you're being kind of conservative, but, but um, so that's the kind of numbers. And, you know, just to, a bit of evidence that maybe this is really not practical. It's recalled a year or two ago in France. Well, it's been at least a couple of years. France tried to implement a, a, 50, a, a 0.5 euro tax on diesel. And that's per liter, I presume. So that would be a $2 a, a gallon tax for us, right? Um, and uh, the trucking industry went on strike. They had riots. They had, Remember they, that is right. They repealed the tax. And so this is the kind of, um, you know, huge tax increase that would be required to pay for, for CO2 sequestration. And, uh, I, you know, just politically and economically, it's hard to see this happen. So if I could jump in, you know, appreciating Dr. Hill's position, um, you know, I will say that you, the U.S. is still very much leading the charge in this technology. Um, you know, currently there are 12 commercial, um, you know, uh, facilities that are out there and, you know, 22 that are still in development. And so, um, you know, this is actually part of the API climate action framework I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, our companies and our membership is supportive of, you know, the government supporting these technologies, fast tracking them, um, you know, clearly the tax implications would, you know, push for policies that support investment in, in these technologies too. Uh, but, but then again, uh, the, the point I raised, uh, should there not be a good cost benefit analysis 
uh, of this process of uh, carbon dioxide sequestration. The other stuff is storage is the same thing. The usage, in my opinion, I am a chemical engineer, it's even more difficult. Um, so there should be some um, form of cost benefit analysis uh, that needs to be done. Uh, research is one item, but anytime they want to implement a research, it would be just as Dr. Hill said, a 50 cents per liter tax on gasoline, mm -hmm. everybody's eyes will <clears throat> go up. So good I, point, I, but yes, um, uh, Laddie, if you want to. I, I think from a, a I guess a, a realist perspective, I, I believe that there needs to be more, like you say, a cost benefit analysis performed. And, and again, to, to Dr. Hill's point, you know, that that implies a, a cost high or price hikes and, and the like. In the, in the US, you know, yes, we lead the charge, um, but I find it very difficult that to believe that even though we're leading the charge and, and our government goes and, and basically has these discussions with other, other governments around the world and they shake their head, yes, they're gonna be proactive in all of this. And what I've found through my travels recently and, and in the past, is they basically don't operate under the same standards that we operate under. Uh, as international oil companies, we're expected to operate under our standards, but the national version of those companies don't. And what I mean by that is, you know, we can't put ourselves, meaning the U.S., under an umbrella that protects us from all the, the carbon emissions. Uh, so it's to me, it's unrealistic until we have a good solid commitment from our uh, other other countries that that other producers you know, other producers in our industry you're correct yes sir okay thanks uh, and i think uh, are there any other questions